Welcome back to Box Office Maniacs, and I am here for more torture. <laughs> I am reviewing The Mist episodes 2 and 3, because why not? They basically showed these, and then I just recently watched them, but you could watch these on the internet. And I just had this overwhelming response for the first video, which really blew me away. You guys are just so awesome. And it's because of you, I'm being forced to do this. No, just joking. I really just wanted to see how bad the show was going to be, is if it was going to improve at all, and a lot of you guys left a ton of comments on the, the channel about the show, and I kind of want to see, you know, if any of them were going to come true. Okay, so for those who don't know what The Mist is, didn't watch my first review, I'm going to do a very, very quick rehash of the show and the book. The book was amazing, about a small town, the Mist comes in, people get trapped in a food market, uh, monsters out there, creatures, tentacles trying to attack everybody. They're trying to get out of the grocery store to survive the book. That was the book. And it was amazing. It's one of Stephen King's best novels. The show, nothing like this whatsoever. So the show is nothing but cliched characters, bad writing, bad acting, bad special effects, bad everything. So you might be asking yourself, well, well why are you still watching it? Well, because, like I said in the beginning here, I want to see what they're doing. I mean, my curiosity is, is is there now. I'm just like, okay, that first episode was so terrible. What could they possibly do to top the, the terribleness of the first episode? Well, they have two more episodes that uh, does a pretty good job of it. All right, so first episode two. <laughs> well, they get out of the police station, the, the people that are in there, and you find out that the one woman, I was thinking to myself, what was the one cliched character that wasn't in the show yet? Oh yeah, drug addict, bing, there it is, it's in episode two. We have the mystery woman who knows kung fu, who's also a drug addict, there you go. You know, that's that slot's full now, so I think they've pretty much covered everything here. So they finally get out of the police station and they go to this church, and the one, the drug addict woman, sees somebody out in the mist, another woman, I might have been her mother, I don't remember if they say who it was. But then, you know, I've had several comments here on the first review saying that there are no monsters out in the mist, that the people are supposed to be the monsters in this version of the mist. And I really, really hope that's not true. <laughs> I hope that there are monsters out there. And in my first review, I kept thinking, okay, maybe the bugs are supposed to be the monsters in the show. And that actually is sort of what they're doing in, in episode three, but I'll get there in a minute. All right, so anyway, they all, they all get to the church, which was like, whatever, you know. Now they brought the religious aspect into the show, and that was in the book. Actually, that was sort of in the book. So they're kind of touching on that a little bit, but, you know, not too much. So now we get to the mall. They're still at the mall. And, you know, I don't really mind that, that they're in the mall rather than a grocery store. I mean, okay, it's Dawn of the Dead with the mist outside. I mean, that's fine. I mean, that's that's okay. If they didn't want to be in a grocery store, they wanted to be in the mall, whatever. So now they're in the mall, and they find this hallway. This hallway, oh, by the way, spoilers, just to let you know, if you haven't watched the show, uh, I will be talking about spoilers here. Not that it's going to spoil anything, because you can't really spoil crap. They find this hallway, and there's mist in the hallway, and there's a dead guy laying there in the hallway. Killed by some unknown thing. And of course, the only radio in the entire mall to contact the outside is down that hallway, and they have to send somebody down this hallway to get the radio. I'm like, alright, you know, this could be kind of interesting. Then they actually did something smart. I was like, oh wow, this is actually an intelligent thing these people are doing. And what they did was they went and got a drone. The only drone apparently in the entire mall, that's, you know, which is kind of odd. You have a whole mall, mall just one drone. Of course you couldn't have multiple drones because that way they could actually send them out and see what's in the mist. We'll send the one drone down the hallway and see if there's anything out there. Again, you know, intelligent, not, not bad. The jock, I believe, is the one who is uh, controlling the drone here. And of course he knows how to do it, he's an expert. The drone goes down the hallway and goes into somebody's office and finds two dead people and gets stuck. End of drone. They find an open window down there. They're like, oh hey, you know, that's where this thing came in. There was no monster in the hallway, no nothing. The hallway was clear. We know there's nothing in there. Let's, let's go down and get the radio. Oh no, 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 they don't do that. First they have to have a lottery. And all of a sudden the mayor of the mall shows up. I don't know what his name was. I'm just gonna call him the mayor of the mall. 
he decides to show up and say, hey, let's do a lottery and put everybody's names in, in a hat and pull it out. And whoever, you know, gets, gets, the, gets the name pulled, we're going to send them down the hallway. So about two hours later, they finally pull a person's name out of the hat. Shockingly, it's one of the main characters of the show, I know, right? And she's like, oh, well, now I'm going to go down the hallway and get the radio. An hour and a half after they sent the drone down there, so something could have come through the window at that point to kill this person. Instead of just going when they saw the coast was clear, no, they had to wait. So anyway, then she decides to go down the hallway, and she takes a guy with her. The guy volunteers to go down there. He's like, oh, I will go with you. And then, of course, she gets down there, nothing happens, goes in the room, uses the radio, and then it's like... The guy's like, oh, I'm from Arrowhead, the, the company that, you know, started this whole thing, and he wouldn't talk to her. So they get in a big fight, and she shoots and kills him. <laughs> okay. Then it comes the, probably the dumbest part of not just this episode, but so far the whole show. She comes running back down the hallway, goes out the door, and there's nobody there. And she comes running down the stairs, and everybody is just walking around, do 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 just walking around the mall. And it's like, okay, well, this person just went into this hallway with me. Why isn't there somebody standing outside the door, you know, guarding the door and making sure that she's going to come back okay? You know, there's, there's nobody even there. They're all just wandering around. That was the stupidest scene I've ever seen. Anyway, so she, and then there, no one heard the gunshot. That's the other thing. Nobody heard the gunshot. I was like, how could you not hear a gunshot? It's not that far away from where the people are was wandering around because they figured, ah, oh, we're going to send her down the hallway. We don't care about her anymore. Nobody stood guard at the door. Just so stupid. Nobody heard the gunshot. Then, of course, the woman has a gun now, and she's like, oh, well, you know, the guy didn't make it. <laughs> so, yeah, besides that, then all of a sudden at the church, they decided to get drunk. Get drunk up in the church. And the old woman who's... Uh, who's uh, husband was killed she's like yeah i'm gonna drink for him why not we're gonna drink a whole bottle it started off with two bottles and then there was a divine miracle where everybody in the church had a bottle and everybody was drinking all getting drunk up in the church and then it ends with a shocking reveal of the jock going to the bathroom and finding some people who hung themselves in the bathroom who happened to be from the arrowhead project so then we get to episode three which was not much of an improvement at all actually that was more exciting than episode three, I think. So in the church, we get introduced to some some kid, and he said he's been in prison. He's talking to the old woman because she wants to leave out of the church to go outside, basically to commit suicide. And he was an interesting character. He was like, okay, well, you know, this could be an interesting character. Not bad. And he takes his shirt off. And he has like, this big moth across the back of his of his uh, of his back. Just this big, and it was the same moth, I believe, that was in Silence of the Lambs. So I was like, okay, you know, and the, and the thing is, the woman is all about nature and, and butterflies. And then in the first episode, I think she had a moth got eaten by a frog or something. And so this was a sign. This is a sign. The guy had a moth on his back. Something's going to happen here. So we get back to the mall, and <laughs> there's two gamers there, two guys that were gamers. And this kind of actually uh, made me a little angry because they're, they basically said, oh, these guys are gamers. They own their own gamer store. And the guy's like, the mall president is like, oh, well, you guys are idiots. And, and your game store is the worst worst store in the entire mall. We're embarrassed to even have you here. I was like, really? You know, is that how they're going to treat people who like to play games now? They're just going to call them complete, total idiots? And the two guys that are portraying the, the gamers are sitting there playing a game like, burr, 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 on a blank TV, just showing that they're like complete idiots. I'm like, really? You know, come on. That's, again, a stereotypical what a gamer is, apparently. Or at least that's what the people who are writing the show thinks what gamers are. Then we have our group of people, the drug addict, the, the military guy, and the stereotypical dad, who ended up in the church. And now they wanted to go to the mall to see what was happening. And then the sheriff locks them all in the basement because, of course, why would he not do that? Here you have literally the world ending. Nobody knows what's going on. And let's just lock these people up in the basement because, you know, they, they're not going to help us in any situation whatsoever. And the gamer guys actually had the best idea, besides the drone in the hallway of the entire show, was to take the two people that got hung in the bathroom, who hung themselves in the bathroom, put them in these shopping carts, and they rolled them outside to see what was out there, to see if there's anything that's going to come out of the mist to grab them and what was actually out in the mist. And I thought, oh, well, finally, somebody who has brains... And it happens to be the idiot gamers. 
So, you know, and then of course they all get angry. The whole group gets angry because they did that. And it's like, okay, well, they don't even know these people. Who cares? You know, roll them out there. And it's a good idea. To use them as bait to see if anything comes out. And then that way they at least know what's out there. About the most intelligent thing so far on the show. And nothing came out of it. They just sat out there in their shopping carts. And then back in the church, we have the... Uh, the girl who was molested in the first episode supposedly by the jock and there was several people or a couple people on the comment section suggesting it was probably her gay boyfriend who had done it and I also think that's probably what happened I think the jock is innocent here and I don't know why her gay boyfriend would do it unless he thought maybe oh hey uh I'm going to make it look like this guy because he don't like the guy, but that's kind of an extreme thing to do, but it's a stupid show, so I guess it doesn't matter anyway. So this guy wanted to get the keys from the priest to get his buddies out of the basement to get out of the church. So instead of just waiting for instead of just waiting for the priest to go to sleep or, you know, get him drunk like everybody else was, he decides he's going to get himself baptized and then he's going to steal the keys. I mean, that was like, what? What? Of course, nothing really else makes sense in the show, so why not? Let's just throw that in there. So he does. He ends up actually getting these people out of the basement, and they don't say what happens. You know, they just get out of the basement because they need to leave something for the next episode. And the other group of people in the mall have now split away from um, the other group of people. The, the woman who was molested, she didn't want to be around the jock, so her and her mom and some, some other people are now out in the loading dock. And if you remember the book at all, there were, that's where some of the really cool stuff happens in the book. It was sort of like in the back of the grocery store by the loading dock. So now I'm wondering, okay, are they going to do something now back there? Is there going to be anything there whatsoever? And the other stupid thing that happened in the show, and I'm getting back to the bugs again, was the guy with the, the moth on his back, the, the woman whose husband was killed, she wanted to commit suicide, so she runs outside. And then the moth guy runs out there after her. He's like, no, you can't go out into the mist, you know, don't don't die. And while he's out there, this big moth goes, foop, foop, foop. And then he's like, oh my god, I just got a moth in my ear. I mean, <laughs> and then what happens to him is even more stupid, is he's out there screaming and hollering and carrying on or whatever, and then he, he grows moth wings because... And then he ends up dying. And I don't even remember how he died. I think somebody shot him. <laughs> I think that's what happened to the guy. Or he exploded or something. I don't know. But he died after the moth went in his ear and he grew wings. Yeah, the show is that bad. Another really two horrible episodes. <laughs> but, you know, at this point, it's it's kind of almost fun to watch the episodes because it is so bad. It's, it's just, it's funny. It, a lot of the stuff in the show is ridiculously bad. The acting is so bad in the show, and the writing is horrendous in here. And, you know, the whole point of the book was monsters out in the mist. Not flying moss and not dogs being torn apart by whoop, whatever. It was monsters. It was really creepy monsters that you could not see and you didn't want to see because they were so creepy. And when you do see the monsters, you're like, oh my god, this thing is awesome. And again, back to the comments, a lot of people were saying that there's not going to be any monsters in, in the mist. It's all psychological stuff or you know whatever and if they do that in the show you know they're already gonna make a bad show worse and I hope we do see some monsters or some form of monster or something out there I think the president of the mall should just order more drones that's all they would have needed more drones and and fly them out there in the mist actually that drone is still stuck in that room so I don't understand why somebody just don't go in there and pick the drone up because there's nothing in there so anyway <laughs> that's my review for episode two and three and I will be back if there is an episode four if it stays on that long to bring you my thoughts on episode four as well so hopefully you liked these reviews and if you did make sure you hit that subscribe button so I can bring you all the awfulness of episode four